Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to show you guys how to play disc based games. Now this can be a little more complicated than normal just because of the amount of steps you have to take. Because of that I'm going to break this video into three parts. The file types you're looking for and how to add them to Hackchi, how to add BIOS files, and how to use external storage on your mini. Since getting these games to work is a little more in depth than normal, if you have any problems or issues please head to the Rockin the Classics Discord or subreddit. I have links to them in my description and if you go to the help tab you can get links to them right here. This video is going to assume that you've already hacked your system and if you haven't I have a video showing you exactly how to do that. It's very short, very easy to follow in the description below and I'll have a card in the top right corner. First we want to add the system cores and retroarch to our system. So to do that we go to the modules tab and to the KMFD mod hub. Go to the retroarch tab and select which theme of retroarch you want. Highlight it and click Download Module. Next, go to the KMFD Cores tab. For TurboGrafx-16 CD, you want Mednafin PCE Fast. For Sega CD, I recommend Genesis Extreme GX. You can give Sega Dreamcast games a try, but they really do not run well on the mini system, so I would skip this one. And for the PS1, you want PCSX Rearmed Neon. Highlight whichever core you're going to use and click Download Module again. Close the Mod Hub, return to the Modules tab, Install extra modules. Put a check mark next to the cores you're going to use. And retroarch if you haven't installed it already. Then click OK. Next we're going to look at the file types we're using and how to add them to HackG. So we're going to open our HackG games folder. I have PS1 games, Sega CD games, and a TurboGrafx-16 CD game. For PlayStation 1, you want to look for Ben and Q. This is the best format I've found that works the easiest. For Sega CD, you may see something like this with Q and image files and then a sub and CCD. You don't have to worry about the sub and CCD, but you do want the Q and image file. If you find something with MP3, it will not work. These cores do not recognize MP3 files, so you won't have any sound in your games. And for TurboGrafx-16 CD games, once again you're looking for image and Q files. I'm going to start off with a simple PS1 game, Tomba. Now Tomba only has one bin and Q file. Whatever game you download may have multiple bin files and one Q file. That's fine, as long as it is a combination of bin and Q. Just drag the Q file into Hackchi. Click the show all box in the top right, highlight your game, scroll down to the console that's used, and select your core. Click apply, then close. Hackchi has this nice feature that will add any associated files with the Q file automatically. So any bin files that are associated with it will be moved as well. You can check this by right clicking your game and click show in Windows Explorer. You'll see your Q file and any bin files associated with it have been moved as well. Let's add Sonic CD. Once again, if we check the file in Windows Explorer, the image file has been moved as well as the Q file. One more time with our TurboGrafx-16 CD game. And here's our image file. Now to add games with multiple disks. In this example, we're going to use Chrono Cross. So we're going to open up our disk one, add our Q file as normal. We're going to open up our location in Windows Explorer again. And you can see we have the Q and disk one bin. All we have to do is go back to where disk two is. And with this folder still open where our bin and Q file are, drag the disk two bin into this folder. Once you're done, you can close this folder. Next, we're going to take a look at BIOS files. For BIOS files, you do want to have your system plugged into your PC and turned on and connected to HackG with the green light in the corner. Make sure that you've already added RetroArch to your system or this will not work. You want to click the Tools tab and then open FTP Client. This is the folder system in your mini. You want to go to ETC, LibRetro, and System. And this folder is where you're going to place your BIOS files. The BIOS files are very important to get these games to work. And these are usually all the ones that you need. You have your three Sega CD files here. BIOS underscore CDE JNU bin. Make sure they are spelled exactly like this with the proper case. So CDU or J or E have to remain uppercase. 
you have to have the underscores in between BIOS, CD, and E, or J, or U. DiscSys.ROM is for Famicom Disk System games. GBA underscore BIOS is for some Game Boy Advance games. This one isn't needed all the time. It's nice to have. Your two files for TurboGrafx-16 games are Gexpress.pce and SysCard3.pce. And the three for the Sony PlayStation are SCPH5500, 5501, and 5502.bin. Once again, make sure they look exactly like these files. I'll keep a list of these files in my description as well. If you decide to try and play Dreamcast games, you want to have your BIOS files in a folder labeled DC and they have to be lowercase. Within that folder, you have two files, DC underscore boot dot bin and DC underscore flash dot bin. Make sure these both are in that DC folder. Once you have your BIOS files, simply highlight the ones you want to move over, drag them into that system folder that we accessed earlier. You can now close this folder. Now let's set up our external storage. There are some disk based games that you can put on the system because they are lower in space. But as you can see here, we've only added four games and they're taking up 2.6 gigs, which is way more than these systems have available. The hardware you're gonna need are a USB flash drive or a USB card reader and an OTG adapter. I should mention that if you're using a Genesis Mini, you don't have to use an OTG adapter. You can use the second controller port for the storage. The adapter is very easy to use. You plug in one end of the micro USB into the system and the other into a USB cord to power it. And then you can use one of the USB ports to plug in your flash drive. So what you wanna do is take your flash drive and plug that into your PC directly. You do not need to have your system plugged into your PC at the same time to get this done. Here's the drive we're gonna use. Just remember which drive letter is associated with it. It can be either NTFS or FAT32 formatted. Before adding your game set of flash drive, you can add your artwork if you like. Simply hit the Google button and select whichever box art you'd like. Or if you have your own artwork you wanna use, you can click the Browse button. Then navigate to the folder where you have your artwork. When adding games directly to your flash drive, you do not hit the Synchronize Selected Games with Mini button. Instead, you want to hit the Export to USB button. Then select the drive that you're going to export your games to. Keep the Create Saves Folder box checked. Click OK. Depending on the speed of your drive and how many games you're adding, this could take a few minutes. Once the game's finished copying over, this folder with three zeros will pop up. If you open that folder, you'll have a list of all the games that you added to your external storage. You can now safely remove the flash drive from your PC insert it into the OTG adapter, and connect the OTG adapter to your mini system. Once you power the system on, you should see the games you added on your menu. Finally, I'm gonna show you how to change discs. So we're gonna open up Chrono Cross. Once the game starts up, go into the RetroArch menu. Scroll down until you see Disk Control. Hit Eject Disk. Load New Disk. And this is where you can select the discs you added to that folder. To show you this is working, I'm going to select Disk 2, and then select Insert Disk. Now when I try and start a new game, we get the message to insert Disk 1. So we'll do the same thing. We go into the RetroArch menu, down to Disk Control, Eject, Load, Disk 1, Insert, and the game continues. And that's it. Remember, if you're having any issues, please go to the Rockin' the Classics Discord or subreddit. Everybody there is very familiar with how the system works. They can help you with any questions you have. And that's all I have for you guys. I hope this video was useful. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.